Okay, so this is just going to be a quick demo of uh, some of the capabilities of Pyara Micro uh, and how it can uh, dynamically cluster together with minimal effort. So uh, I'm not going to show any of the tools aside from just uh, Pyara Micro itself. Um, so the only things that you'll need to be able to recreate this uh, demo for yourself is uh, a download of Pyara Micro. Uh, which you can get from our website as you can see here uh, just click the downloads link in the top uh, and download uh, Pyara Micro 162 uh, and you'll need uh, a WAR file uh, preferably one that uh, makes use of uh, session replication or um, jcache so uh, just to show you what uh, I'm going to be deploying this is my application uh, it's not actually my application, as you can see here, <laughs> it's actually written by Steve. Um, but this is available in our Pyara examples repository, which is on, on GitHub, um, Pyara slash Pyara examples. So you can download this exact example uh, and run it yourself. Uh, it's a very, very simple application. Um, so you can see we've got an application config.java file here, which is this one. Um, oops, sorry, it's not that one, it's this one. Um, which has got an application path of web resources uh, which is just a, a, a generated file um, this one is the uh, main driver so this is a JAXRS class uh, which has got a path of cache uh, now we've just got three methods in here uh, we've got a get method a put method uh, and a delete each of them uh, take uh, at least two parameters, uh, which is a uh, key and a value. Uh, sorry, or just a, um, a cache key. Uh, it's only the put method which takes the uh, the cache value. Um, so each time we can use the same cache key to refer to the same uh, cache, which is named in this uh, annotation here. Uh, cache result for a get cache put. Uh, for the put because we're updating it uh, and cache remove for the delete because we're just removing the value from it. Uh, you can see here the get method has got a default return so if um, we haven't put any data in there uh, by default it will just return hello world um, so you, you won't get uh, any sort of error message in your application logs uh, or in the browser. So here to demo it I've got three extra uh, scripts I've got to get a put and a delete. Uh, I'm sure you don't need me to explain what those are going to do, but we're going to use uh, curl um, to ping an endpoint. Uh, now, the first thing to introduce for those of you who haven't really used Pyro Micro before is how to start it. Uh, so it is just a jar file, um, and you'll notice uh, differently to the way that uh, maybe Spring Boot or Wildfire Swarm works. Uh, by default, you don't need to do any other packaging or any other modifications to your existing file. So we've got the pyramicro.jar and separately we've got uh, restjcache.var. So this could have been an existing WAR file that I've already had. Uh, I haven't needed to open an IDE, I haven't needed to start anything or modify it in any way uh, and I can use it with pyramicro immediately. So just like any um, uh, Java program, we use Java minus jar pyramicro.jar uh, and that will start us up a pyramicro instance. Now obviously that's not got anything deployed to it, this is just pyramicro with um, nothing else done and now it's booted. Um, you can see we've also got by default some uh, Hazelcast uh, member information, I'll come back to that soon. Uh, but obviously this is just started in the foreground so I can just do control C on the terminal here and then stop it. So once again then, to uh, deploy my REST jcache, rather than because it's not packaged in with the jar file, I will need to run java minus jar pyramicro.jar minus minus deploy REST jcache.war. Very, very simple, very, very easy. Uh, and at all times we're keeping the uh, business logic separated from the runtime. So let's just run that. And once it starts up, what we should see 
uh, is the uh, deploy message to say it is deployed our WAR file um, and also the context path which is what we'll need to use to, uh, to access it. So we can see uh, it's ready, it took a little longer to start that time um, and here is our application uh, and you can see it's deployed at slash rest jcache. So we've already got the uh, URL here in this browser uh, and as you will recall from the keyword uh, by default on a get if we've got nothing in the cache we're going to return hello world so if I just reload this page what we should see is hello world actually so now if I put that in the background so it's uh, still running let's just check that that has still continued it has what I can do is show you some of these uh, extra files that I've got so if I open up my put.sh this is going to call the um, uh, an HTTP put method uh, it's got some default values in here already so it's just going to go to localhost 8080 and add in this uh <coughs> default MSG message uh, and that's if I give it no parameters so if I just call put.sh that appears to have succeeded now if I refresh my browser I should see I get default message back, which is what I expected. So what we've seen now is that I can deploy my app and I can interact with it, but that's not really anything that's uh, particularly uh, related to dynamic clustering. Now I did show you in the uh, logs that um, we've got uh, Hazelcast information that comes out. Uh, obviously you can see we've got some uh, extra data that's popping up on the screen because I just put it into the background. Uh, what I'll do actually is I'll, I'll use nohup to uh, avoid getting all of the extra uh, information into the uh, into the console here. So I'll run the command again java minus jar pyramapper.jar minus minus deploy rest jcache.war now to make sure that uh, ports aren't a problem uh, because obviously we don't want to have to be back in a traditional world where you need to already have a design for your cluster already specify static port numbers um, we want this to be a dynamic uh, scenario we use the command auto bind HTTP and again we're going to use the ampersand to put that into the background so now all that output that was coming into the console is now going into uh, this nohup.out file. So what I can do is just follow that. Just get the last few messages as it starts. And we should see, because I've stopped and started this, uh, we go back to the hello world message. So now, if I run the same command again, because I've got this auto bind HTTP, what I should find is that subsequent uh, instances of PyR Micro um, will start up uh, and not have any problem whatsoever. So now, if I do, uh, if I try and follow the file, we can see that it's joined the cluster. Uh, if you just caught that at the top, there was a, a message where it said there were two members of the Hazelcast cluster. And there we've got another one that's finished loading. You see the uh, load times have jumped up quite a lot because this is a virtual machine and it doesn't have a lot of power to it, to be honest. So we have the same server that we had before. Uh, and the way that the auto bind HTTP works is that it will try and use a default port. Uh, if it finds that in use, it will just increment it by one and keep doing that until it finds one that's available. So if we load up 8081, we get again, it's hello world. So let's try again with our put.sh. Let's put the default message back in there. Now you'll remember that in the uh, put.sh file, I'm going to 8080 by default. Here in my browser, I'm still on port 8081. So now if I refresh, 
what you'll see is that the default message that I put into the first PyRMI Pro is accessible from the second PyRMI Pro. Actually, if I run the uh, command again to start up PyRMI Pro, uh, I can actually get a third one. And then I should see the same uh, behavior again there as well. It'll start up another one that was four. So if I again do, you can see just do a get, and this should just get the default message. This is going to 8080. Uh, and let's try going to 8082. See if that's started up yet. It's not started yet. Okay, so um, what I'll show you as well is that we've got the uh, delete message here. It's just very, very simple. Just curl to, to the uh, delete in 8080. As you can see, yep, 8082 has started up. Now notice that that wasn't part of the cluster when I actually added the default message. It started up after I'd started the first two uh, and it's already um, had the data from Hazelcast. Uh, so I haven't needed to sort out any sync myself. All that's just handled in the background by default. So now if I do uh, want to delete whatever's in the cache under that key of test, I just run delete.sh and already in this 8083, this fourth PyroMicro that I've got started, it's already gone and we're back to the default hello world message. So that's everything that I wanted to show you in this uh, quick demo. Um, we will be doing uh, one or two other screencasts and demos about uh, how you can take this uh, behavior of, of PyR Micro powered by Hazelcast uh, and use it with other tools uh, and dynamically scale up in response to load for your uh, various different microservices that you might you may have.